we thank you because you are good and you are kind. Once again, we are gathered together in your name to worship, to adore. And I'm asking you that in the name of the Lord Jesus, you speak to every word. I'm praying in this service, let there be revelation, let there be wisdom, let there be direction, let there be healing. Minister to your people in a very specific way. I pray for those watching online also, that they will have just the same power of God in this room, touching them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. you can have your seat. Would you please turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 17? Proverbs chapter 17. I really want to cancel everyone here that take our time and watch the first, second, and third service online where we spoke about fasting and prayer. Just a couple of announcements before I start teaching, before I leave that out. Um, how many of you are around for the women prayer meeting? You know, we were around for it. It was anointed. It was anointed. It was anointed. So um, this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every time we'll fast in September, we'll gather together. You know, it's a meeting we don't announce because we don't announce it because there are some meetings that are so anointed. You don't want people to come and wonder what is happening. We don't even stream it. We don't stream trust Thursday and Friday. So it's really powerful, life-changing. It's called awakening. It's this Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I want to encourage you that make our time, no matter how busy you are, to be in these three days. It will change your life forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The men's meeting was powerful. The women's meeting was, yeah, the men's meeting was really, really powerful. You know, all the men that couldn't find time to come, I feel very bad for you. Because you never know what you missed. That's the point. You never know what you missed anyway. But for all of us that were here, it was really powerful. We had several hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of men here. Amen. Praise the Lord. And also, um, um, on the 24th of September, which is the upper Sunday, we'll be having um, a miracle service in the evening at 5 p.m. Just wanted to let you know that. And please remember that research continues tomorrow. Next level prayer continues tomorrow. At, you know, in the morning, we're going to pray. If you join the first... So in this service, I'm going to speak about emotional healing. But in the first, second, and third service, we really spoke about, you know, divine intervention. And um, I want to encourage you to go back and watch it. It was really, really powerful. It was a powerful, powerful, powerful time. Divine intervention. We're going to speak about emotional healing in this service. So let's go ahead and read. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I, I'm, I'm hoping I can teach you how to interpret your emotions differently from the way you interpret them. Hallelujah. I'm hoping we can do that. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. I'm just waiting for them to have it on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. He says, a merry heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit dried of the bones. You know, one of the reasons why we teach that this is very foundational to our teaching on emotional healing. Once you are in a better emotional state, you make better choices. And that's what he's saying here. He says, a merry heart doeth like medicine. Take note of that. So he's saying that your state is going to even affect how your body feels. He says, a merry heart do it like medicine. So when you when you when you're full, when your emotional state is positive, it's energized. He says, even your body feels as if you're on, you you know you're high on drugs, you're high on vitamins. He said, but if for any reason you're emotionally broken, you're going to feel as if you are dried up, as if you are drained as if you are, you know, you're overwhelmed. That's not a great place to be. And that's why we need to always put ourselves in that state. You know, I'm learning over and over again how my emotional state affects my choices. Sometimes you will think it's the people around you. Meanwhile, you're the person. You're the person that you know, it's making everybody, and this is why emotional state is very important. So I used it differently in the first, second, and third service, and I'm going to use it differently right now. I'm going to use, this is all I'm using. And this is, uh, 
they need to pray for me because maybe she ever gets them somebody can use to wash my hands. You know, since I'm I'm going to that at the beginning. This is clay. This is clay. This is hard clay. You know, and when the clay is done, you're going to have things like this. If you make it very well, I have those edge parts, and that's the potter's wheel. You're going to have something like that. You're going to have something like this. This is a clay pot. You can drink water. This is a clay cup. You can drink water from it, you know. And just to let you know, I've heard that drinking from clay pot is better than drinking from plastic. Yeah, because when you drink from clay pot, I never knew this. You don't even have to put it in the fridge. The clay will put in the right temperature. You know, and that's how those days they didn't have fridge, but they preserved the food. But if, so let's say, um, Where's the clay coach here? All I need is to give a microphone. Yeah. Give a microphone first. And, and this speaking to the reason why you need to be whole. So the moment we want to work on the clay, so we want to use this to make that, you're going to kind of, you know, begin to break the clay. And, and the first thing you, we will do before we break the clay is to, what, what are we doing right now? We are wedging the clay. We're wedging the clay. We're wedging the clay. And, and this is what wedging the clay looks like. This is, you know, you just, you know, just break it up again. And you just wedge the clay. So the question is that why do we need to wedge the clay? Pay attention. So we need to wedge the clay to press out the clay and make sure there are no air bubbles in the clay. So, so as need... you see the clay right now, there could be hair bubbles. Hair bubbles are natural. It's not like it's bad. It's just part of the clay work. But if the clay has air bubbles, what would happen eventually if we just, if we don't wedge it and the clay has air if bubbles? If the air bubbles are there and you make something and the air bubbles are still there, it could end up exploding by the time you try to fire it. And, and the reason why some of you find yourself exploding is because air bubbles are still in your emotions. So you get into a relationship and you just explode. You get into a place, boom, you know, and, and you wonder, and, and and what we have to do is to take the clay first. And you know, when you are walking on the clay, it doesn't even seem as if yeah, it seems as if you are playing. Because many of you attend this service, but you notice that your emotions are getting better. You notice that you're having yeah, you, you know, a very successful man attended this service and he told me this. He said, Okay, I'm understanding why I feel and how I feel better. And I said, that's a process because there's there are emotions trapped inside you that you don't understand. You just see yourself behave in a certain way. And because you don't understand it, you don't know how to fix it. You don't know how to change it. And you know the thing? The worst is that the notion is that when we come to Christ, those emotions will disappear. You know what I discovered? When you come to Christ, those emotions just stay there. And they're waiting for you to use the tools you found in Christ to redefine them. That's why you find someone that is born again acting a certain way and you wonder that but you're born again. It's the same thing. The hair bubbles. Praise God. So we're going to start with that. Do you, do you have water for me? I should just keep teaching. Let me just keep teaching. Oh, do you have the wipes? Hey, do you have a wipe? Okay, I have wipes here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So please, you can sit down. You, you, you can sit down. Yeah, so I just... I want to make sure it doesn't stain any other thing I'm holding. Praise God. I said, praise God. So let's go back and read. Let's go back and read. Proverbs chapter 17 in verse 22. Can you read it all together? One to go. All right. So let me, <clears throat> so we began to talk about, so let's look at some, I mean, just a lot of things we can look at. You know, we look, we, last week we're looking at some other things. You know, just a lot of things you can look at this week. You know, and, um, one of the ways you know if you're healing is that your response will become very different. That's one of the ways you know if you're healing that your response will become what? Very different. Glory to God. In the other services, I asked them to make something, but, in this, but my, my challenge is that in this service, they all will be looking at you. They're not going to pay attention to me. So let's do something different. Let's move it towards the choir side so that they can be making it while we're doing that. They can take all the time. Because in the other services, everyone is just looking towards this place while I was teaching. You need to watch the first and second service and get the whole illustration. I used it differently, but you know, you can get the whole illustration. Hallelujah. All right. <laughs> 
too much examples. Yeah. So when, when you're healing, one of the things you will notice is, one of the things you will notice is that when you're healing, sometimes the situation does not change, but your response begins to what? Change. For example, one of the things you notice is that you are able to stand up and express your emotions. When, you, when your emotions, when you're not trained emotionally, two things, you are either going to erupt at your emotions, when you feel emotions, you erupt, or two, you will suppress them and allow people to match on you for a long time. In fact, a lot of people think that it's very wrong to express their emotions, especially men. And that's why men suffer a lot from suicide. The reason why is that the emotional pressure builds up until it takes over them. And when it takes over them, then they feel as if I can't talk to somebody that they kill themselves. Let me, so let, let's look at, I mean, yeah. One of the signs that you're healing is this, emotionally. You will find it easier to speak about how you feel. And this is for someone that couldn't find it very easy to speak about how you felt formerly. And when you speak about even your pain, you will speak about your pain from the place of either I'm healing, not that it's killing me. So it's true that you were raped when you were seven years old. But by the time you're speaking about it, you're going to be like, you know what? I had a very bad experience and I wish I didn't have it, but hey, that's life. And I'm just walking through it right now. You know, but when you're not healed, the way you talk about it is that if any man comes near my daughter, the guy will squeeze them. And you, you wonder that, but nobody's coming at your daughter. Why are you outraged like that? The reason why is that your pain is still very present and your pain is speaking. Glory to God. Because it's like a fresh wood. Anybody that has a fresh wood is always very careful. When you have a fresh wood, they're always very careful. The second, the second area you will know if you're healing is this. When you're healing, you begin to give better explanations to your emotions and to your problems. And what has happened is that, and let me tell you something. This is the work of the Word of God and the Spirit of God inside us. For example, anytime I feel frustrated, one of the things I tell myself is this. Let me tell you. Have you felt frustrated before? But you know that if you don't manage frustration very well, it can lead to depression. Yes or no? But you know, every time I feel frustrated, you feel frustrated because inside you, your mind is looking for a better way to solve a problem. You can tell that you are dissatisfied with where you are, but you are not where you are going to. So your mind and spirit is navigating areas to look for it. That frustration is what you have. So instead of allowing the frustration to lead me to depression, I turn the frustration to power to push me forward. But the reason why is that now I understand my frustration. So some of you are frustrated here. And, you know, maybe you're frustrated that you're not married. You're frustrated that, you know, something. But you can convert the frustration into what? Into power. Who knows what I'm talking about? Anybody here? Praise the Lord. So, I, I, you know, back to the original text. The Bible says, a merry heart do it like medicine. So when you are in a very great emotional state, you will find that it's almost as if, it's almost as if everything in your life is nothing well. Because you're in a great emotional state. If you're not in a great emotional state, do you know it will affect the way you walk? You will walk in a very negative way. And the reason why is that you are just in a bad emotional state. Okay. Let, let's take a practical example. So we here, maybe previously or right now, you're struggling with your emotions and things are just going really bad and you almost want to lose it. Anybody like that? Someone, okay, that's great. I would love to speak with you. Where's the microphone? Just give. Yeah. You can actually have your seat. I would like to see your eyes. Yeah. Sorry, uh, good morning, everyone. Good, sorry about good morning. My name is Tokwe. Okay. I was here on the I was here for the Wednesday service. Yeah. And it was very powerful. Wednesday service was yes. very powerful. Yeah. I live across the road from this church. I haven't I haven't been here for two years. Mm. 
but I just usually do online service. Okay. So I stepped in on Wednesday and the fire was really, really good because I've been dealing with depression for a while. Okay. And the reason why is because I lost my best friend mm. and he was my friend for over two decades. And uh, when he died, every cell in my body was broken. I couldn't sleep at night. I would see him having hallucinations and stuff like how, that. How did, how did he die? Uh, he had liver issues. He had liver, so it's been for a long time. So yes. you, were dead, you saw his pains also? Yes. Okay, so it's been, yeah. I did, he was my friend for over two decades. Okay. We, we, I would say we more or less had like a soul tie. Okay. Because the morning I heard he passed away, I was very numb, I couldn't feel anything. I was literally walking like a zombie. Yeah. And I didn't eat for three days. He's Muslim, so we went to the airport to pick up his body. They took him to the mosque. We gave him a bath from there to the graveside. After you that were day, involved in all that process. Yes, I was. I got to the airport at 8 a.m. The body didn't arrive till 1 p.m. Because he was, he was. We were really, really close. We didn't date, but we were really, really close. Close, yeah. And this is someone I would speak to 12 hours a day. You know, out of 24 hours, he was my confidant, my mentor, everything basically. So what when, do you miss? Sorry? What do you miss? Uh the companion. Yeah. The love he mm -hmm. gave me. Yeah. He always used to give me reassurance and tell me that Nami and you did this journey for life. You're never ever gonna struggle. Whatever you need, I would always be there for you. And he loved everyone that I loved as well. When they said we should come out for testimony, I wanted to speak, but I'm a little bit shy. So I have a sleeping, my, my depression led me to a sleeping condition called narcolepsy. So narcolepsy is when your brain cannot regulate your sleeping pattern. So you have like a chronic sleeping, you know, disorder. It basically turns your sleep into like a video game because you have like sleep paralysis. You, I, I have like visual hallucinations and things like that, you know, and... Uh, but the day when I came on Wednesday yeah. and you prayed yeah. and I felt the fire, like I would normally see like maybe 50 numbers when I wake up on the wall. But after that day, I saw one number. There was a significant change. Praise God. You know? But let's talk about your depression now. So you yeah. don't want to be depressed. Do you, want, do you still want to be depressed? No, I don't. You sure? No, I don't. It, it, it's really hard because he passed What's away. What's your name again? Tokwe. You know, Topa, I really think you will still want to be depressed. Okay. I'll tell you why. Why? Because you still want to miss him. Yes, because... But it goes together. Okay. Okay, so can I say one thing? Yes, sure. You can say anything. My birthday is next month, yeah. October 5th, yeah. and his birthday is October 2nd. Yeah. We both used to live in Dubai together, yeah. so we would usually have our birthdays together. Yeah. So, you know, there's so many things that I just can't believe he's no longer here. I, I agree with that. So, that's just, yeah. so it's not easy. I'm healing. I'm healing. Yesterday, I told my wife that I miss my mom. My mom died 14 years ago. Oh, wow. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. On Wednesday after the service, one of my best friends went to clear out our father's room and saw my mom's obituary, like the booklet of the death, and sent it to me. He said, wow. He said, so he sent it, she was making a joke. She said, remember? so she showed me when my mom's picture, you know how they do photo booths, me and my mom's picture, my wedding. And I said, do you remember that I made, he said, do you even remember that I made the gilly for your mom's wedding? And she was referring to that, but she really forgot that she was talking about my mom was dead. But the reason I'm saying so to you is that, although I miss my mom, I have to let it go. If I don't let you go, I'll be living in pain all my life. So the reason why you feel depressed is that, one, something you can control has happened, but you're holding on to it. Let me give you, the, let me give you a good definition of unhappiness. Everybody write this down. The, one of the greatest ways to be unhappy is to try to control what you can control. You'll be both frustrated and unhappy. So the big principle, this is how you get out of depression. I cannot control what happens to me. Can you control he died? Yes or no? No. What can I control? I can control my response to what happened. 
So let me give you something that will help you. And I'll talk about how you give yourself things that help your mind. I've taught myself over time. Some people are in my life for a season. Some people are in my life for a lifetime. Your friend was your life for a season. You need to accept it. The problem is that you thought he was in your life for a lifetime. But in reality, he's in your life for a season. And you are trying to make sure he's in your life for a lifetime. But he was in your life for a season. For, let, me give a, let me give a good example. Your parents are in your life for a season. Either it's good, bad, ugly or not. All of you, including myself, you're going to leave your parents at one time or the other. If that doesn't happen to you, it's a curse. Because that means that your parents will lose you. One person must die before the other. And the way it's structured, you must not die before your parents. Yes or no? Yes. So what does that mean? Your parents are in your life for what? A season. Tell me what you're thinking. You're absolutely correct. Um, I should let him go. I should let him go and rest because... He's resting actually. Yeah, the one that's not resting. The truth is that there's nothing you're doing right now that impacts him. You are the one that is having all of the things going on in your life. He perfect rest. I believe that because even and if he could look over and say something, he's gonna say, Why are you doing this to yourself? But let me tell you the reason why. You've not let it go. Because you've not found the reason to. That's the biggest reason why. You've not found the reason to. Your biggest reasons are in the past. You've found the reasons to hold on. You've not found the reason to let go. You want to let go, right? Yes, I do. Stand, let's help. Stand up. Let me help you. Okay. Are you single or married? I'm single. You're single? Yes, I am. If you continue this way, will you ever be married? Well, I have If you continue this way, will you ever be married? Successfully and happily married? Maybe not. Not is the answer. Question. If even you have children, will your children suffer from this? No, I wouldn't let them. You won't let them? No, I won't. Hmm. So all of a sudden you found the bigger reason. Oh, so all of a sudden you know you, you will not let them. You know you have the power to control it. But you've been acting as if you were powerless all along. So the power is right there, but you choose not to exercise it. You've had the power because I wish I gave you the power right now. I didn't give you the power right now. The power has been there all along. But as soon as I said, it's will affect your children. No, it will not affect my children. Oh. Question, if it will not affect your children, you can choose other things that will not affect also. I miss my mom, but I can't allow that to affect me negatively. I choose to use that experience as a counterpart to make me live forward. Is it going to end today? When, 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 when will things change? Today, tomorrow, next year? When? I'm much better. No, I'm just asking you. So, what are you going to... I know you're better, but what are you going to... Like, this is it. I'm drawing on this is it. What is it? It's a process, but... No, no, I'm I working agree. on it. You know, the truth is I struggle with when it's a process because change happens in a minute. In a minute, in a set, when you make up your mind. Like, that's when you make up your mind. How you work it out, it can take you a process. But is that how you make up your mind? Have you made up your mind that this is over right now? Yes, I have. You don't even sound like you've made up your mind. Yeah, you know, because everybody, do you think she has made up her mind? No, everybody can say you're going to, you're still going to go home and enjoy it and cry and do all of those things. What would your children tell you, mommy, keep on like this? Your unborn children want to set you free. What are you going to make up my today or tomorrow or right now? I'll make up my mind. You'll make up your mind. Yes, when? From today. From today. The reason why I'm saying, st keep standing one minute. You're going to sit down now. The reason why I'm saying that, back to that scripture, there's always a state you are in, you can easily make up your mind. There's a state you are in when it's very, 
very difficult to make up your mind. You know why? You know why we can discuss like this? Because I'm moving you towards a state that's making you move your mind. And that's why it seems so easy. But this is a point where you have to say that now I make up my mind. Because when I leave you by yourself, I can dare, I can, I can almost say you will just drift back. Do you want to be free? Yes, I do. Do you want your children to suffer from this? No, I don't. So if you don't, what do you have to do now? I have to make up my mind to be free. To be free. So if you are doing that, what do you tell yourself? Talk to yourself and tell yourself that it's enough. I want to hear you tell yourself, yeah? It's enough. Is it enough? Yes, that's enough. Uh, is it enough? Yes. I'm free now. Yeah. Enough. Have you listened to you? Have you listened to you? Yeah. Have you listened to you? The you inside, has he heard what you said? Yes, he has. He has? He has. Yeah. Because trauma actually can damage the brain, causes a lot of pain and, you know. So is it enough of pain right now? Have you had enough? I have. Yeah. You will miss him, but it's okay. That's life. He was in your life for a season. And that's okay. You can change that. Stay with me. I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to learn to stay. Stay with me. So I'm going to learn to stay. I'm going to learn to stay. What I can control. What I can control. I will leave. I will leave. What I can't control. What I can't control. I can't control his death. I can't control his death. But I can control how I respond to it. But I can control how I respond to it. I respond to it. I respond to it. With discipline. With discipline. With peace. With peace. With a hopeful future. With a hopeful future. That's it. Thank you. So remember everything. You're going to respond to this with what? With peace. With hope. Yeah, I need a lot of emotions are going through you. Come, come, come. I, I can tell your emotions that, you know, I, I can tell a lot of things are going through you. Oh, sorry. Um, Take the microphone from her. Come. I want to give you a hug. That's why I'm asking you to come. Yeah. Is that how you used to work or that's how you began to work after he's died? That's how you work. lot of black right you wear a lot of black right now right have you noticed the pattern and you wear a lot of black right now right so next time i hope to see you wear a lot of black right now you know why you wear black because of that's what you see you just dress according to your emotions anytime you're not happy just watch you just wear black most people you, you the thing is that you've not even taken time to observe it have you noticed most people that are health that are depressed they're always wearing black they themselves don't even notice. You know, I never said everyone. I said most. <laughs> Praise God. Some people wear black for another reason. It's a color of not being... It's, it's also a color of dominance and also a color... Never mind. <laughs> Praise God. Is there another person here that has something similar? You're going through something and, you know, another person here that way? There's another, you know the lights are very bright on the stage, so some people raising up their hands, I'm just going. Okay, there's a lady, is it a lady? Yeah, someone, yeah. Yeah. Have to go through all of this and still end up you know, dead. Yeah. Because if I'm being honest, 
Bim was an amazing soul. Like Bim was one of the best people on earth. Yeah. He was so young. He was so ambitious. He had he had this zeal. He was always wanting to make sure everything was going good, not just for himself, but everyone else. Mm. So prior to that, so how do you feel now? You feel depressed because of that, or what? Are you, what are, I was. You were okay, but but you're fine now. I'm getting here. Like, I don't know where you are. We laid him to rest yesterday. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm still... so how do you feel right now? Because I don't know what to say except to tell me exactly how you feel. I feel tired. You feel tired. Yeah. Why I'm, do you feel tired? I'm exhausted. What? I feel. Yeah. mentally emotionally so so why do you feel tired and exhausted because i just feel like it's not worth it anymore if that makes sense what's not worth it like the whole point of going through life over and over and over and over and over again oh wow do you want to die now no i don't <laughs> i'm just exhausted if that makes sense. okay so let me put a balance to it it's human to be exhausted it's what just one of the at, at in life you be exhausted just tap and say hey it's part of being human it's just part of being human. So congratulations, welcome to humanity. The reason why is that whatever has clay gets tired. Whatever has clay gets what? Tired. Even clay gets tired. Natural clay gets tired. I, I wish they could tell you that clay can be stopped on sometimes. They said <laughs> they can be stopped. Whatever just gets tired. The reason why I'm saying is that sometimes you're working so hard and you feel pressure. It's okay to just say, I'm tired. That's it. Sometimes some of you want to see me or talk to me and I'm like, I'm tired and you're upset. Really, I, I don't feel bad that you're upset. But I feel bad that you don't understand I'm human. And I just have my what? Limits. I'm just human. You know, no matter how much you want to think I'm on a divine pedestal, I'm as human as you are. I must sleep. I must get tired. And all of those kind of things. Sometimes after next level prayer, I've just finished praying for two hours. Before that prayer, I've spent about two hours. I've done about four hours of prayer. I'm sweating like a Christmas goat. And someone says, Pastor, I just need to talk to you. I'm like, no. And the person feels upset. I'm like, I'm sorry. I do. I'm so sorry that you feel upset, but what can I do? So, my friend, the first thing is just normal for you to feel that way because we miss them. We miss them. It's just normal for us to feel that way. But the second thing that, why are you not exhausted apart from missing him? Yeah, the lady. Um, like I said, um, life was life before then. What is it? I said life was life in before then. Like life was what? Life in. <laughs> was lively. Life in, life in, like. Um, oh, life were... was given. Yeah. <laughs> right. There are so many things going on, and it was almost like a cycle. It was back to back to back to back to back. There was just always something I had to handle by myself. Oh, oh so you were just going to back to back to back. Yeah. To back. Then, oh wow. Then he okay, just said, okay, 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 that's good. So just like, what was the what it? Yeah. Do you have siblings? I do, but we're not very close. Yeah. You have a job. Yes, I do. Where do you work? House of Tara. House of Tara. Do you know many people don't have a job? Did you eat yesterday? Yeah, I did. You ate what you wanted? Yes, I did. Do you mind people are hungry? Do you have people that love you right now? Yes, I do. You do? Do yeah. you have people that have people that don't care about them? Do you have, have you been to the Bobby Hospital before? And Luth? No, I haven't. You don't haven't? They put people's hands like this and put legs like this. The way I see you, I can tell your hands and legs work perfectly. Yes, they do. The reason why you feel very depressed is this. You're focused on what is not working, not what is working. So I know that you lost somebody. I know you have back to back to back to back to back. But you forget that there was a time you were praying to get a job. Where you are today, it was a prayer point for you at some point in your life. Yes or no? Yes, it was. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you're living in your testimony. But what happens to you is that in the moment when things go so bad, you distract yourself from what is working and you focus yourself on what is not working. Everybody look at this. I want to give you something powerful to write down and to listen to. In life, good and bad is always happening. What you focus on becomes your atmosphere. Did you get that? In life, good and bad is always happening. What you focus on becomes what? Your atmosphere. So if you focus on good, you have a good atmosphere. If you focus on bad, you have a depressive atmosphere.
glory to God. I said glory to God. So in life, good and bad is always happening. Just like, you know, in, that's life. Good and bad is always happening. But what you focus on, what I'm telling you is that you need to train yourself to focus on the good. And let me tell you, that, and some of you, a lot of good things are happening to yourself. You know how you destroy it. People destroy good things through comparison. The reason why you feel bad that your life is not going well is because your friend traveled to Dubai. If you didn't see that picture on Instagram where she was posing by the beach and say, living the life, you will not feel, de you will not feel depressed. You will not feel depressed. But as soon as you saw that picture, you came back and said, hey, look at me. Where have I gone to? Abuja. Before you said that, when you traveled to Abuja, you were happy. It was the first time you entered the plane. You were so grateful. You even stayed in a good hotel. You were so happy. You took pictures of the food and posted, living the life in Abuja. But as soon as you fell, Kolanda, you know, went to Dubai and posted like this and said, living the life, baby girl life. Hey, you know, you and the reason why is that, just remember today, the way you destroy something that is good is to compare it. And that's how people destroy their relationship, destroy their marriages, they destroy their joy. Because you keep comparing it. And you really forget that it may not look as fancy as it thinks, as it looks rather. Many of you, the reason why, let me tell you something, and that's why many of you, as soon as you go on social media, you become upset. Because in your mind, there's a comparison. As soon as you see your friends, let me give you a real life example. There's a friend of mine that was a pastor and when our church was smaller his church was really getting bigger and becoming so this you know i just called him and just said sir you're my friend but i'm going to unfollow you on social media he said what did i do i said nothing i said your picture just give me problems just give me heart problems he said well i don't know what that means and i stopped following him after six months i walked on my heart i followed him again i still follow him to today we don't have problems but i have to watch the state of my heart Say with me, say the way to destroy something great is to compare it. Some of you just compare your body. And I'm talking about girls. You will say, oh, you see, my bum bum, look at your own bum bum, look at, look, look. You know, why? Why do you want to do that to yourself? Some of you are comparing your husbands. Some of you are comparing your wives. You compare houses. You say, ah, our husband, why? Some people have big houses, they don't have a home. Some people have a rich man, but they don't have a husband. Some people have people living in their house, but they don't have a family. Be grateful. Let me tell you, always look at life from where it has paid you. And say, Lord, I'm grateful. glory to God I say glory to God okay let's close let's close I want to read now I said I want to give you things so 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 th there are some emotions I want to discuss with you so one there are sometimes you feel uncomfortable yeah when you feel uncomfortable it can be a negative emotion but I want to give you a positive meaning uncomfortable means I need to change something so who here feels uncomfortable anybody here yeah, I'm giving you a possibility. Uncomfortable say, I need to, you know, I need to, I need to change something. Uncomfortable means I need to change something. I need to clarify what I want. I need to take action. When you feel uncomfortable, those are the three things he's telling you. Because many of you, the way you can describe your feelings that what I feel what uncomfortable. The second thing is this. I, I'm giving you just maybe two more. Some of you some of you feel worried or fearful and anytime you have fear it's just telling you that there's something you need to prepare for so that you can cancel there's fear that is not wrong for example you're just afraid that tell me something you're afraid of i'll give an example someone at church told me that he lost a lot of money 
but he was just afraid that he would lose the money just afraid eventually he lost the money because he gave it to someone that duped him i told him i said the moment you were afraid he said i thought it was just fear i said your fear can be good because your fear wants you i said when you are afraid why don't you step back and ask yourself and this is how you treat fear this is how you master fear ask yourself why am i afraid write it down i'm afraid i might lose this money then ask yourself what can i put in place so that i don't lose this money there's a fear that you'll not get married yes or no for some people ask yourself why am i afraid i'll not get married you will know why you're afraid now is that not true yeah write it down and ask yourself what can i do against it because sometimes your fear is a caution sign that is warning you praise god and then we stop for today hallelujah where's the, my friend my, my friend over there how are you do you feel better now yeah you made a choice is that your friend is, it, is she your friend you met in church that's good amen my friend i feel depressed about um your friend that died how do you feel now do you feel grateful or you feel lost you feel grateful in between you move from side to side that's great but at least you can choose to focus on something glory to god can we close let's stand on our feet and pray i want to hold someone's hand and let's pray let's hold someone's hands and pray look for someone's hands and hold their hands and let's pray look for just one person not two just one person hold your hands and pray for them and our dear father wants to thank you for the privilege of teaching your word today we ask in jesus name that you will please let the word of god sing deep so that people will will live life from a better emotional place we give you the praise and glory in jesus name we're praying amen praise god someone say hallelujah